wealth transfer of the century is happening and it's still at the initial phase to take part in it or not it's up to you but don't just get stuck with the traditional asset and accumulating it for wealth creation because the world is changing it's looking at digital assets and wealth transfer in the coming years along with the adoption of the technology the inflow of investments will also increase china is setting the stage and setting the path for the entire world and the other economies will not stay behind for much time they will also race and try to defend it it's up to us to choose an asset after proper research as ripple is setting the stage with its ilp protocol and the pace of adoption of its protocol the entire investment arena is being opened up for investors to fight and gain wealth as a smart investor official documents are available all over the internet if we search and go through it we actually get to see a holistic picture of where the wealth is moving and how the transition is being made if you actually want then there is no issue in finding documents related to the fundamental of the asset we are talking if we want we can go do our search and find these documents these documents actually showcases the strong fundamental rate laid out by the crypto asset or the digital asset ripple itself mm -hmm. there are other documents which indirectly connect us towards what we are looking at and this actually gives rise to a different financial service industry and blackwell another financial service provider is showing this if you go to the world economic forum you can find a change of wind happening and that's leading towards 2030 welcome to the scientific investor channel where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly now this document from the city group is actually a giant document but don't worry we have actually covered that if we actually directly move into chapter d which is on page number 87 of the document we can actually see they are classifying digital assets now when they are classifying that what you have to understand is they also talk about different aspects of that mm -hmm. they talk about bitcoin going 14x ethereum going 100x and a ripple going 350x now we being in this community for a long time know that yes that wasn't the case if yeah if you are only looking at one year okay that's the case but if you are looking at the entire cycle we knew that it was 1400x and for traditional investment fields when they are looking at it say city group when they are looking at this and their researchers are looking at this they are stunned because they are looking at something impossible for them in their traditional assets and that is the reason they are classifying it as digital assets and the new wealth creation area Mm -hmm. so we believe this partly reflects the larger effect that flows into smaller currencies so like once the market is getting the attention retail investors are next phase institutional investors everyone will be coming in and they won't be actually taking much of a risk the newbies will maximum come in and take hand on the top five top 10 crypto assets they'll try to put in then they'll start doing their research because only little amount of people does the actual research first and then invest if we are doing the proper research we can actually find this article which is published recently we can actually see that it was accepted by 8th may and published 10th may 2020 now if you look at that the study was actually concentrating on forecasting the entire models for cryptocurrencies but the point which i'm highlighting here is that they found that it's a promising type and profitable type of investment if the entire research community is working on this and finding out like this the traditional investment firms will be allowing to do this now as we just saw banks are actually coming out they are showing that they are providing the custody and trading solutions for this one now it won't be only for xrp they will actually allow for uh, other valid digital assets as well but the stage is being set and the work is being done in this third document it's about blockchain technology and how the transaction is being changed now if we actually move into the 16 year that's page number 32 in the document if you are going uh, page number 16 in uh, the document you can actually see that they are actually talking about ripple net xcurrent xrp i mean in the 
it's rapid platform but the context on which they are talking about it is necessary because they are talking about interbank transaction they first talk about swift gpi and as we know it's the swift messaging system for the corresponding correspondent banking network whereas when they talk about a ripple net they're actually talking about a settlement of that product so which is really a high a uh, point of uh, validity and the use case for this asset because they are showing that it ensures finality of the settlement with no risk like in their words they're stating it like ensuring no settlement risk so in the end xcurrent provides a confirmation message back to the institution if we go into the figure we can understand that real-time settlement is they using IntelliJ protocol with bi-directional messaging system now that is actually based on the latest iso standard as we know yes but not through swift they haven't updated the junk system yet now if we actually move into another document this is from uh, the sbi group and if we are looking on the 127 page like if you actually want to go onto the internet and search this the strategic uh, business innovator sbi holdings 2019 information meeting now i'm on the one page 127 on this and showing uh, this particular aspect of this mm -hmm. it is actually showing ripple labs as a company as well as crypto asset now why i say as well as crypto asset because if we move into the digital asset space of this document they are stating crypto assets are moving from a speculation centered approach to a stage where the actual demand and the practicality is being looked upon now if we actually look at that we can actually note and understand they are directly stating that xrp is being pushed like full-scale efforts towards increasing financial services using ripples xrp and r3 scoda is being done so that is not actually a small thing if we consider as it is coming from the SBI group directly. Now, this is actually an old document, but they are talking about the central bank digital currency. Now, if you have already watched the previous document, you actually know what has been done and what is being looked upon recently in 2020 for digital asset space from the cryptocurrency side for the central banks. That is the synthetic central bank digital currency. Now, in this old document, if we actually uh, go through that what we understand is they were already talking about permissioned and permissionless blockchain and after their study they actually understood that there is no required or requirement to do the mining method because it is no necessary like in their words they're stating that the mining method of maintaining a blockchain is no longer necessary because they understood that if you go to a permission blockchain you can actually have many advantage Mm -hmm. you can actually have the valid nodes or validators for that ledger which you know you have authority on you have clear clarity that these institutions are well regulated so if you actually look at an example for RippleNet, all those validators in there are regulated institutions so there is nothing to worry about illegal activities being happened because all the nodes are known and bound by legally binding contracts so you know you don't need that extra energy eating mining methods now from there if we shift into another document the economics of digital currencies we can actually uh, target directly here in the first page itself in the overview you can actually see that this article argues that the incentives embedded in the current design of digital currencies pose impediments for uh, their wider usage now the point which they are highlighting is currently there are incentives so once you know the uh, network gets uh, more usage the price or the transaction fee which is low as of now which is kind of attractive as of now will actually change and that will be even higher than the incumbent payment systems now if you're looking at bitcoin then yes that is true when the network gets congested you can see the price of volatile fees being volatile from one dollar ten dollar even fifty dollar right so if you are sending fifty six dollar uh, bitcoin you are paying like fifty dollar in fees that's like damn you don't have to actually go through that that's kind of shit of shit right now back to this blackwell's document in the blackwell's document if we actually go into the page number seven we can actually see they are talking about ripples transaction cost on average 81 percentage less than the legacy system and this along with xrp makes it appealing for investors now if we read 
81% less than the competing bank networks for a fee in terms. Mm -hmm. And then similarly to XRP, this is extremely appealing for investors for banks and liquidity that Ripple is offering. So as far as an investor is looking for them, it is really like an alluring asset. Now, when we come into the bottom of that, like what they are looking at as the future for Ripple, they actually, uh, in their words, they are stating this, the impressive progress of both Ripple technology and the cryptocurrency should give investors and traders optimism. Now, you can decide whether you are an investor who's going in for, say, six months to 12 or 18 months. But as an investor, you can be actually looking at the asset, accumulating it and investing for it on yearly basis, say three years, five years, 10 years, that's up to you. Now, Ripple has managed to develop in a high volatility market, meaning it has the ability to withstand pressure. Now, we all know that. Any progress that it makes should increase its value. Now, I completely believe that because this FinTech is actually revolutionizing the entire sector. Now, in the last document about this official documents, which is for the global financial and monetary system towards that 2030. Now, we also saw this being targeted, 2030 being targeted in the United Nations, right? A new world order project. It was also being targeted towards 2030, which we discussed a couple of videos back. Now, in this one, if you go to the page number nine, which is chapter two, you can actually see they are talking about the future of financial services in 2030. So that's not centuries ahead, right? It's just a decade. So in this decade, we are going to see all these technological changes and how this actually connect back to what we were stating from the beginning, like the entire investment, the wealth transfer and all. This actually pays in like it takes a knot and ties in together. Technological progress and its rapid adoption by consumers are disrupting the essential elements of financial services. Namely, trusted means of exchange using fiat currencies and network, management of wealth, storage and accumulation of wealth. Management of wealth is changing. The storage and accumulation of wealth is changing. It's going digital. And what this has to be, uh, you know, in terms of cryptocurrency and digital asset, how this is linked, if you go down in the document, you can actually see management of wealth and connect it with one of the three forces mentioned here, which is the DLT, including cryptocurrency. You can actually see a new asset and efficiency. Now, yes, I agree they are talking about lower oversight and need for taxonomy of trust. So in that aspect, they are looking for regulations. So one the, once the regulations hit this platform, meaning the digital assets area like BTC for BTC and ETH when we talk like no 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 you see in 2019 they actually went this much uh, Ethereum went this much but XRP then that's actually a play of manipulation from the side of elites I'll say or the whales because even the regulators shits are not actually coming out yes I agree UK uh, kind of came out and stated it but Majority of the market is in US, majority of the investors are from US and they still haven't actually taken a stand stating whether this is not a security or it is a security. They haven't reached a conclusion yet. So until unless they do that, it's kind of a slow progress here, a bit laggy, but keep an eye on this. They are all looking at it on a new asset. So the entire financial services are being changed and the digital world is here and it, it won't be actually taking much of a time because if you actually come back and see this wealth creation in the age of digital assets you can actually understand this is where the next generation of wealth is being created and it's happening right now just the question for us in the scientific fam investor family is are we participating in that if we are we have to actually understand in real terms the traditional wealth creation and the modern wealth creation is kind of a bit different. Yes, for traditional guys, they'll say digital assets is existing in the parallel world, you know, you don't know, but the bridge is psychological, but every bit as real in terms of traditional wealth creation. So if you believe it or not, it is happening. They are actually pointing this really out. This is where the next generation of wealth is being created and we would actually like to participate in that. In the wealth management aspect from RBC, you can actually see even the banking institutions, which is being published recently, is actually focusing towards digital assets, wealth transfer. So financial education in this new age is necessary. 
and this aspect of the wealth transfer from say parents grandparents of uh, you know the silent generation uh, baby boomers towards generation x and millennials will mainly actually there is it won't be at least fully but some of it will actually come towards this one because it is estimated about 70 percentage of the entire wealth transfer would be completing by 2030. Mm, that is interesting because if we actually go back to the world economic forum we can actually see they are also targeting 2030 then if you go to united nations organization you can see that they are targeting 2030 for the new world order project so there is some kind of tie up in there and china is the first one coming out and stating this right so uh, anyway that is happening if you own something you can actually do that well now this document is a bit showing the fundamental of the asset which we are looking at because here it's not a ripple which is small it's the swift the gpi version which is you know the uh, pumped version for them they put out you know the ferraris uh ferrari models and newest ferrari models body and put it into a ford model t and still it's being mentioned like this if you look at that swift actually managed to cover all the aspects of that entire framework whereas swift is only till here and if you look at the ethereum project it's here in one of the platforms whereas ripple covers the entire framework and the network from the crypto associate is actually showing that new european parliamentary research service reports mention ripple now yes if they are only mentioning the name of ripple that's not a big deal but this is about a research uh, service report which is uh, from european parliamentary mm -hmm. so if you're actually going through the entire document you can actually see that they're actually comparing ripple and swift and here it's mentioning like a large players in global remittance market so understand that it has actually changed for instance ripple net Ripple's cross-border payment software for banks is an alternative to Swift. It's directly being mentioned. The competition is kind of ending. Swift is being kicked out. That's what I personally see from this. It's an alternative to Swift and it's directly coming out from them. So automatically this will be adopted. And when you come a bit down, this is clear. XRP can be a replacement for that inefficient Swift system. Wow. Know it or not, it is a replacement and they are mentioning it a bit diplomatically still it's cool because they are talking about the on-demand liquidity mm, so that's not a bad thing now when we actually come into the discussion of uh chris larson he actually stated this we bet about the ilp protocol and we as we started in the initial uh, of this video they are stating that ilp protocol and the pace of adoption for the ripple protocol is what making them the leader in the financial industry and at the same time we say retail investors are going into binance uphold the coinbase blah 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 or etoro to buy hold cryptocurrencies or digital assets whereas now think banking institutions are actually going and opening this along with you know there are financial service providers like buck fidelity and all where the giants move in the smart money goes in buys accumulates and hold it for a long time now they will be buying in millions and billions which we don't know but it's for sure that these kind of platforms are actually made for them now yes the world is changing the wealth transfer is happening the question is are we taking part in that i hope the scientific investor family is doing what they can do and we will emerge as winners it may take time but we will